there are two sources of data that I'm going to talk about today. The first source is from the Engineering Workforce Commission. Engineering Workforce Commission has been collecting salary data from I industry groups, from, um, corporate, uh, from corporations, from employers for the past 40 years. These are the data that engineers can use to benchmark their salaries. So in terms of being able to have data with which to go into a salary negotiation, these are very useful data. What I'm going to point out here is that these are then data that don't really drill down into the demographic features, which we'll talk about in a moment. But you'll notice that at the very early stages of the career, so for folks who are just coming out of um, college, and for engineering, the bachelor's degree is the terminal degree. It's considered it, the entree point to the field. The salary gap is much smaller. Over the course of careers, the gap gets much wider. And these data are also in the, um, the handout that was out on the table called engineering salaries. So in order to look at the demographic features, namely how does race, ethnicity, and gender impact the salary gap, we need to look at another data source. And what I did for this was I looked at the American Community Survey for 2009. So there are about two and a half million engineers in the United States in one of um, a few types of occupations engineering managers, which is the smallest group, about 144,000. Um, engineering technicians, which is the next largest group of about 700,000 people. And then the largest group are people who are working as engineers, about 1.7 million folks. The other thing about these groups is that they differ quite a bit in terms of the kind of education that they all possess. Folks who are engineering technicians, um, a lot of them have um, associate's degrees, whereas uh, like 80% or, or more have associate's degree or less. For bachelor's, for folks in engineering jobs, specifically engineering, 80% or have bachelor's degree or more. But for those who are in the management jobs, 37% have a master's degree or higher. So really these kind of match up to education as well. Just like most times, we are, I'm limiting my analysis to those who are age 25 to 64 and I use the ratio, it's in that, um, the booklet that uh, AA, American Association of University Women had, the wage ratio looking at the median earnings for whatever group I'm interested in as compared to the median earnings for white, white males. So the first chart I'm gonna show shows you the, the wage gap for each of those three groups of engineers. Engineering managers, women actually have a little bit higher median salaries than men. Then when you go to engineers, they have a little bit lower median salary, and then for engineering technicians, much lower. And the gap widens, right? So this suggests that there might be something going on in terms of perhaps educational um, credentials. The next chart, and again, these are all in the, the handouts. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time dwelling on them. What we see is that if we now take the, each of the bars in the previous chart, and imagine that we take each of these and expand it into a separate graph, and now we're looking at age within each of those three groups of occupations. And what we see is that for um, engineering managers, there's the, the gap that favors women up through the oldest age group, the 55 to 64 year olds. And in fact, across all three of these, folks in that 55 to 64 year old age group have the largest gap in pay between women and men. Now, to, to put that in context, those are folks who were 25 to 34 years old in 1979. So it's not in the deep, dark past of the 1950s, you know, something like that. It's right in, the, in our sort of recent memory. But we think that that might, it suggests that there's a bit of a cohort effect. The next chart, now we're looking only at folks who are working as engineers. So this is 1.7 million people in the United States looking at those who are full-time year-round employed. And it's kind of interesting, I think, because you know, the, in, the, the in the handout, there's a chart, but these now show you that if you look at men, right, the, there's a fair level of stability in the gap in pay across age groups. The exception being for African-American men, and this somewhat squares up with some recent in information from the Economic Policy Institute, and that is, if you look at the orange line, the one with the little diamonds on it, it's very similar to the purple line on the next chart, which is white women, right? So African-American men and white women 
over the course of these cross-sectional age groups show a fairly similar profile in terms of the, the gap between their salaries, median salaries, and those of white men. But what we see for the other groups, for Asian Pacific Islanders as well as um, Latinos, um, what we see is that the men's salaries stay fairly consistently, uh, you know, in terms of their relation to white salaries, but for women, we see this drop, and we see a fairly precipitous drop, so that Latinas are really the most disadvantaged group amongst the 55 to 64-year-olds in terms of the pay gap. 